How's it going, ladies and bros? I'm Bobby Sixkill, and welcome back to Head as Code. We have just finished uh, working out in the pool there, where shit got pretty intense, and, uh... uh well, Jasmine got her memories messed with, and we also found out that she already has had her memories messed with. She might be a robot. She might have H's personality imprinted in her brain. We don't really know at this stage, but... Let's carry on, shall we? As we waited for the train, I wanted to break the silence, but I didn't know what to bring in. Maybe something familiar? We're just small talk. You know, ever since we woke up here, we haven't really talked about anything else other than this place, huh? She nodded slightly, but gave no verbal acknowledgement. It was like she wasn't there. So I thought maybe uh, it'd be nice if we did. Once again, Jasmine nodded at me in a dismissive fashion. I furrowed my brows. I grew annoyed with her lack of enthusiasm. What was happening in her head? For instance, what about your drawings? How are they lately? Mm-hmm. Once again, I was given a nod in reply. It wasn't even a reply that was proper to my current question, even considering the the verbal acknowledgement accompanying it. This time I grabbed her shoulders. Jasmine, I'm talking to you. Are you a zombie? She finally woke up from whatever daydream she'd been having. Perhaps it had been a daydream. It hadn't been a daydream, but a day-night day nightmare. Oh, uh, what? Oh, right, right. What was it again? Your drawings. They're still doing great, yes? Yes, of course. My drawings are doing... fine. I'm just thinking a lot. Sorry if it looks like, like I'm ignoring you. I highly doubted I was going to get a sensible conversation out of her for the time being, but I tried something else anyway. Okay then, here's an easier one. What's your favourite colour? My favourite colour? Don't tell me it's green. You already know that. Just answer it. It's banter. Okay, okay, um, I don't know, maybe green? God damn it, I knew it was going to be green. Because that's H's favourite colour. No, wait. Hello. Okay, so the Hannah part of your brain is saying green, but the Jasmine part of your brain is saying blue? Her words gave me pause. I knew she liked the colour blue. She always used it in every picture she made somehow, no matter which shade it was. I knew this because my favourite colour was green. I also knew it wasn't her favourite colour at all. So indecisive. For a moment I thought you'd answered mine because you wanted to have things in common, but then you changed your mind. I thought it, make it might make you blush a little, but there was no reaction to that sort. Oh, how strange. I could tell she wasn't all there. All the non-committal answers were pushing me towards one conclusion. Whatever happened with the chair had been much more important than I thought. Yeah, but all of a sudden she won't tell us about it. The atmosphere grew tense. The train was still not here. I needed to solve this issue before we went inside, because I wanted to save my friend. Whatever demon inhabited her head, it had to be purged somehow. All I could do was speak to her, but about which topic? Two came to mind, directly confronting her about the chair or obliquely bringing it up by talking about the key. Did she know something I didn't? Did I have the courage to mention the chair directly? Was it just a better idea to talk about the key for other reasons? The key might have been our way out of here. I had to remind her about it. Once you'd be outside, I could take her to a hospital or something and try to get her head back on right. See, it's that, that bit there in the game, not just that specific moment, but other moments like it where I feel like all your decisions up to this point change what decision gets made there. You don't get to directly make that decision. What about the key you found? I feel like a decision was made based on my actions, but without me directly choosing it. You know what I mean? Just then. Do you know what it's for? she has been towing for a while already, which only helped bring it to, to mind too. I thought perhaps it might have occupied her mind the most. Right, the key. Good thinking, S. Huh? But I didn't do anything. Now I remember now. We won't need to take the train. Gosh, I'm so stupid. We can use the key over here. Come with me. What about returning to the leisure station? She didn't answer me, instead choosing to vanish into the darkness of the passage on the side of the station. Wait, did she have the key to unlock that hard, heavy gate? Is it for the gate? I think it is. E found it in the infirmary and gave it to me earlier. Let's see if I can unlock it. She grabbed the gate and pushed the key into the keyhole. I waited outside of the little hall for her to finish, content in, it being, in being able to see something as it was too dark inside. I think it's unlocking, S. Come on in. I entered, rather eager to see where this thing would lead us. The gate is kind of stuck, though. Like it doesn't open. I'm gonna need your big strong arms to pull on it and dislodge it. Flattery will get you nowhere. Oh, ha, 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 ha. yeah, I can do that. 
I cursed my ineptitude at maintaining myself in the face of compliments like those. I grabbed the gate with both arms and yanked. It didn't budge. I tried again and grunted audibly under the force I applied to it. It's not moving even with my arms. Try harder. I will. I yanked onto the gate again only to realise maybe it opened only opened on the inside. Good thinking. I tried that too, pushing on the gate, but it was still stuck. Ugh! That thing doesn't want to move. I felt my way to the lock, using my hands to feel it up. Was it even unlocked? Maybe Jasmine didn't realise the gate was still closed. I think the gate's still locked, Jez. Yeah, I know. Suddenly she flipped me over and pressed me against the gate. I was so close against her. I could feel her chest pressed against mine. What's going on? Keep calm, Simon. It's just your friend pressed up against you. It's just your friend who maybe might want to be more than friends. I repeated these words in my head, trying to stop my heart from beating so fast. I felt her breath against my skin. Oh, she was close. It didn't help matters. Wait. Something felt kind of wrong with this, didn't it? Yet, I couldn't stop my head from growing more erratic as a result of the physical presence I felt against me. She was so close. Her face was right in front of mine. I could barely tell thanks to the light from the other side, but it was there. There was a halo around her head due to the lighting from the outside. She was illuminated like an angel. Was she here to liberate me from hell? And yet for some reason, all I could think about right now was the stupid train. Specifically the memory of Marco, Jasmine and I taking the train to go back home was accompany was occupying my head. Forget about it, Simon. She's gonna kiss you, you idiot. I cursed myself to try and regain some sort of mental foothold. I could feel it coming, but is she really okay with it? Jess, this is all very sudden, but... But? Shh. Some things are better left unsaid. She leaned forward and I, a little more and I braced myself. And then pain rose from my chest. What? Sorry, Simon. You won't find me here. You won't find me anywhere. I am nowhere. What? What are you saying? I'm saying you should forget about me. My hands reached for my chest. Something warm was rolling over my fingers. I brought them up to my nose, trying to understand what it was. It was liquid and it smelled like metal. That would be blood. Blood? Did she... Yes. She stabbed me. I could feel the knife embedded in my body. Sorry. I didn't really want to get rid of you, but... I want to get out. I want to leave this shitty place forever, and there's someone I have to take with me. See? That kind of thing is better left unsaid. You don't need to know when you're going to die. Who... Who is it? Who do you have to take with you? Is it G? Here's my last breath to ask you. I wanted to know. Jasmine unlocked the gate in silence as my body slid down to the ground against it. She kept it locked to lure me over in a dark area. I had been had, through and through. As the gate opened, she stepped over my fading body. She replied in her words, broke my heart more than the knife plunged into it. Not you. It's a good thing that darkness itself came for me later. Came for me that day. Had to be G, right? J, kiss bad end. Okay. That didn't uh, add anything to our little locky doos. Guess we'll have to pick a new place to go. I wonder if there's more in this area. Can't remember. Are there other options we haven't taken over here? Ah, over here. What is this? Oh yeah, we need to not mess up the freaking the the lock. All right, I'm going to jump back in, and hopefully we won't mess up the lock this time. I'll bring you back when we do it. Okay, so at this juncture, I'm not exactly sure how we can get through here. I did solve the puzzle correctly, um, but uh, that didn't change anything. So it's probably choices up to that point that will make the difference. Same for this one and this one. These offshoots all around here. They're important, obviously. I say we obviously take this orange path up here next. We'll fill out these major paths, the orange one, and then we got the cyan one over here. Fill those paths out, and then maybe we'll be able to come back over these ones. If we can pick the right choices up to that, I don't know, whatever. Let's jump into this orange one. I'll bring you back when we get to the choice. Oh, I see. Well, the choices are who to talk to, and obviously we've only talked to A so far, so... Uh, let's talk with Marco. Marco's a bit of an unknown quantity at this stage. I came up to Marco. He looked like the kind of person who didn't take his situation seriously. His next words reaffirmed that. If Jay would have had her hair dyed blue instead, she'd be a blue Jay. 
Oh, shut up. Why did I even want to talk to you? <laughs> hey, that's not very nice. I'm just making a joke. You know? Joke? It's a joke. He made a few motions with his hands while he purposefully spoke in broken English. We have to lift our spirits if we're going to make it through, no? It doesn't do us any good to be frazzled by what's going on. What does that even mean? Oh, frazzled? Exhaustion or something like that. I wanted to be a bit fancy. Feels more informal than fancy to me, but anyway. I guess they're all about, about done now. He did have a point with his argument too. So I guess thanks for uh, lifting the mood. Even if your methods are questionable at best. Oh hey, can't spell questionable without able. <laughs> you got a point there. You moved away with a big grin. Yeah, you can't spell questionable without quest. As in Simon's quest to escape this terrible curse known as Marco. I joined the others after grumbling some words to myself. Okay, that was not the right choice. I don't think. Right, let's jump back and we'll pick a different person to talk to. As we head back onto our normal, regularly scheduled program. Or well, maybe not. I don't actually know. Let's just jump back in. Uh, let's talk with... Is this G or H? I assume it's H. I came by H, who was with E. The former was trying to make the girl react by doing a bunch of waving movements in front of her face, but he wasn't reacting at all. Naturally. What are you doing? That's extremely rude. Is it? She can't really... She can't even see me, so she doesn't know what I'm doing. To her, I'm not doing anything. That's right, but we can see you. At least... I can, since everyone else is too busy. Do you care then? I want to tell you something, but I can't. Disabilities are dumb, and all of them should go away. I hate them all. Are you 15 or are you fucking 7? <laughs> it's not so simple, but I do have a way to talk to her. The old man gave me these pens that can write letters in braille. As soon as I showed her the pens, she snatched them along with a piece of paper. Hey wait, I wasn't done explaining. We don't have the time, slowhead. Just give me like one sec. The girl quickly wrote something before stuffing the pens back into my bag. She gave E the paper. Though E looked more and more puzzled that sh the more she put her hands, read her hands on it. Um, I don't really understand what you're saying, sorry. What? But I thought these pens would... Hey, calm down. There's a way to use these pens I didn't have time to explain. I glanced over at the rest of the group. Apparently they finished opening the door. Whatever you have to ask her, we'll have to wait until later. We've got the door open now. Later? More like never. I'm sure I asked it correctly. I guess she just didn't want to answer and that's fine, but I don't like that. Tough. The twin grabbed E's hand and pulled her along. The poor blind girl followed, uncertain of where she was going. Putting my hands in my pockets, I followed along too. Okay, and we are back through the normal stuff. Do I think the message is important? Oh, here we go. So this is going to be what changes our path. I guess I said last time that it wasn't important. Simon believed the note was important? There was a part of me that just couldn't let go of the paper with the mysterious message. Why, in fact, would it be here if it wasn't important? The entire place is far too meticulously built to leave in something random without reason. I couldn't afford to get teamed up with the one that didn't belong. Or, perhaps I should have aimed for that. If I was with them, perhaps they could get me out of here? But the situation was more difficult than simply escaping. I had to escape, yes, but with my friends. What if I, what I needed was information. I had to talk to somebody. I did have a lot of choices right now. There was an old man behind the counter. He might be knowledgeable about it. Then there was the twin next to me. I could also talk with the strange girl E, who might have known more than she appeared to. I disregarded Marco though. He was either very deep in thought, or on a date with his drink. Or both. It wouldn't be very helpful to always rely on what my friends thought. That eliminated Jasmine and Marco to begin with, but I figured if I went to talk to G, H would unscrew my head, so I dropped that idea too. <laughs> I probably only had, I can't believe he's scared of a little girl. I probably only have time to talk to one of them, since I bet they were getting antsy to head out shortly. We'd have to be between the old man, Ray, and H, and the strange girl. Four choices. This could change a lot. Um, I suppose... Let's go with Ray. Maybe the man himself would have more information for me. He did find the paper, after all. Maybe there's something else he chose to tell no one yet. Hey Ray. I decided to man up and stand up to join his side. He didn't look very welcoming and the second I called for him he gave me a dismissive wave. I wasn't deterred by his attitude though so I insisted. Listen I want to talk about the paper. You didn't hear me the first time huh? Guess I didn't talk loudly enough for your little boy ears. You didn't talk at all so. 
Anyway, go away. I'm trying to think. I didn't go for the obvious sting, or else I might have ended up sprawled on the floor and barely conscious. That might be the case, but it's about the paper. Yeah? What about it? Do you know anything else? Did the paper come with anything else, or... No. There was just the paper. Is that all? Yeah, I guess. This discussion wasn't turning out to be very fruitful, so I abandoned the course after that one single question. However, he grabbed my hand to pull me closer. Before you go, listen. I think A's planning something. I don't know what his game is, but I'm going to get to the bottom of it soon. Do you suspect him of anything? He's got some weird stuff in his bag. I caught a glimpse earlier, so I'm going to try and get info on, on that out of him. I don't know when, but soon. He released me. I didn't know what he would be going for. I was just hoping he wouldn't wouldn't beat up the old man, or worse. But I had to admit, I also harboured similar thoughts. A part of me was unsure about A. Oh, I'm pretty sure about A after all the murder he's done. In the end, I didn't ex I didn't figure out exactly what I wanted to know. Just then I heard a sound nearby. There was something like someone falling down onto the ground. I took a glance around me and noticed Marco fell off his seat. Uh, are you okay? He definitely wasn't, but this was a formality. Our resident barista ran over to our side of the counter, taking a closer look at the boy. Uh, allergy to coconuts, perhaps? This is an anaphylactic reaction. I need to take him to some sort of hospital quickly, or else he's going to suffocate. Quickly, someone help me! Ray pushed us out of the way in a surprising show of altruism. He grabbed the boy and effortlessly lifted him into his arms. Yeah, yeah, to the train then, let's go. Wait, you don't know where you're going? We found this stuff earlier. She took out a somewhat large pile of folded papers she carried in her pocket. Unfolding it, she revealed they were maps for the stations. Look, one of them is an infirmary. If you go through there and then stop there, let's go quickly then or he's going to die. Whatever, old man. The two of them took off. Jasmine looked at me. Then she panicked, realizing something I'd yet to understand about our predicament. Oh no, we have to head there too. Remember what Smiley said? The train will only stop at a station that hasn't been done yet. They can't make it to the infirmary because the stations on the way aren't occupied or solved. If teams don't disembark at those, A, Ray, and M will be stuck before they can help M. Quickly, we all hurried after them. I had the decency of also taking hold of E's hand to pull her along. Eh? Huh? Where are we going this quickly? Did something happen? I had no time to explain, and I was the only one who could help her down the stairs. I had to be quick, or I would miss the train. Then we arrived at the little lobby, and from the opening, I could tell the train had just arrived. I felt apologetic to E, but I really couldn't stop. If we didn't get in there... Quickly, I ran through the station. Jasmine kept an arm out to try and see if the doors would remain open that way, but I doubted they would. The smiling installed a death collar on us, and this contraption could have severed our arms without a second thought. Finally, we made it in. <laughs> I panted, letting go of E, who quickly put her hands on a nearby surface to reorient herself. She made her way to a seat, and after making sure nobody else was there, she dropped into it. We made it. All in. I noticed the twins were there too, and so was Jasmine. Surely the train closed its doors. Well, you know, we managed to make it to a new path, obviously. I assumed each colour represented a character, one of the characters that we could team up with. I assumed orange would be Ray, so that's why I talked to Ray specifically, to get up that orange path. Finally, we were off again. We're going to the other side this time, huh? I guess it was a bit out of our control. Anyway, we have two stations to stop at. The first is the security room, and the other is the laboratory, yeah? Who's going where? We got a security room, a laboratory, an infirmary, that one's for A&M, and a gym. Like, for fitness. The train was already inbound to the first station. Very soon it arrived and stopped all movements. Quickly, the more we wait, the more danger M will be in. Who will go? What are our teams like? Uh, I think the twins might go together again. Before my suggestion brought any reactions, Ray walked back in from the other compartment. We need someone to go, huh? I'll go. Oh, okay, that solves that. With who, though? She cast a glance at me. Was I really going to sacrifice myself like this? No, I couldn't. If A would go with Marco, since he needed to bring him to the infirmary, I was the only one left who could communicate with E, and so my duo was already decided. Disregarding her hesitation, Ray stepped towards the girls. I'll go with her. Suddenly his arm shot out and snatched one of the twins. Since it had been the one in front, I assumed it was H, as G tended to shield herself behind H sometimes. Hey! Let go! Very quickly, he stepped backwards toward the open doors. Jasmine moved forward as if to stop him, but he quickly stopped her in her tracks with the click of a certain metallic object. Made it clear he wasn't joking. 
The man had a gun, and it was trained right at us. His strength alone could keep the girl in check. This is just his insurance. Why is he pulling a gun on us now? We're trying to worry about Marco here. What? What? Shut up and stop gesticulating. Random. You're coming with me. She's in the outfit that looked like the girl that pushed us down. You and your twin are super suspicious. We gotta find someone who isn't like the others, huh? The chances of us landing here with identical twins are abysmally low. If I had to guess then, one of you is who we're looking for. You know, the traitor. Whoa, hey, hey, don't move now. He reaffirmed his hold against H's body, squeezing her tighter with his strong arm. The man called G taking a step forward to defy him. Don't do anything you might fucking regret, okay? The go of her, she's not like that, I swear. She's not the one you're looking for. What's that? Are you then? Heard you both say something about a traitor to each other earlier. Um, of course not, you idiot. Neither of us are who you're looking for, you stupid maniac. Let me go, I'll kick you in the nads. And no matter how much she swung her legs, every hit and missed. It almost felt as like she was missing him on purpose. Perhaps she didn't want to actually trigger him to pull the gun on her. Perhaps she was only doing this as a token show of resistance. I closed my hands into fists and inhaled, then exhaled. I wasn't going to go and pull her out of his grip. That would be too dangerous. Jasmine was just as angry and powerless as I was. When Ray stepped out following our inaction, she lunged forward. Ray aimed at her. No. I screamed just as H screamed too. G's screams joined the cacophony and I almost lost my footing, with a sudden noise erupting around me. I pulled Jasmine back into the train though. A, a shot had fired from the gun, though it was difficult to tell if she'd been hit. I quickly took a look at her as we fell into a heap. The bullet wasn't in her. I looked up at the ceiling. The bullet wasn't even in the train either. A quick glance at Ray told me he'd fired into the air as a warning shot. We gotta leave in pairs, so don't fuck with me. And you wanna know where I found this gun, I bet. Before you accuse me of doing something bad, some bad shit, you should... But his monologue was interrupted by the doors closing behind him when he stepped through the doorframe at the end of the station. He kept gesticulating before H suddenly bit his hand. By the time he let go of her, it was already too late. Shit just got crazy. I thought he was worried about saving Marco, but now he's pulling a gun on everyone. What the fuck is going on here? The train was driving off. I was left alone with Jasmine, who was standing up, G who was frightened and looking extremely perturbed, and E who was as normal as usual. She doesn't know what's going on. It's okay, all we can do is hope that he sticks to his word. What did he say? What did he say at the end? What should we do about what? I don't know. I couldn't hear. Did you? I asked G, but it was useless. The girl was sobbing. I wasn't too good with this, so I left Jasmine to handle it. Our teams were pretty much decided anyway. I'll go with E to fill in what happened. You take care of G, okay? Yeah, that's the plan. It's okay. We'll get your sister back. I also glanced over at Marco and A in the other compartment. The old man was standing up slowly, apparently having been knocked unconscious before. Did Ray... I shook my head. The man's actions couldn't be condoned, but I had to do something. I had something to do. In the next long minutes, I spent them explaining everything to E. That's horrible. I hope she'll be okay. That man is a jerk. I don't think he really cared about what we thought at this point. I don't think he ever did. She couldn't see me, and we had to search rooms again. This is going to be strange. Before I knew it, Jasmine and the twin had left, and then Marco and A had left too. I also hoped Marco would be fine. It had taken a while to get to the station, so if he was treated now, perhaps it might be too late? I cringed, clenching my teeth together hard. You know, he's in a lot more danger than that girl is, I think. I couldn't allow myself to think about the worst case scenarios. Finally, we arrived at our destination. I took E's hand again. We're there, huh? Let's go. We stepped outside. Mechanically, we wandered the to the open doorway. We only had one thing to do, so... We stepped into the lobby. Very shortly, the doors closed behind us. How many times would we have to do this, anyway? I calculated we would run out of stations in maybe two, maybe three outings. That's if those maps were all we had access to, at least. I guided E up the stairs. There was a tiny hallway on the first room that I poked my head in. It was entirely different from the ones we found before with Marco. It was a fitness room, but it also had a full gymnasium attached to it. Or was it the reverse? I relayed the information to E. A gymnasium? I always wanted to go to one of those. Not that I really can anymore. It's not really my kind of thing anyway, so I'm not very fit. I can see you, but I bet you probably went to some in the past. I can't see you, but you probably went to see some in the past, huh? She's giving me a compliment, wasn't she? 
It was a little awkward since I couldn't reply quickly. I did want to tell her she looked pretty fit, but I chose to withhold, even if she was cute. Jasmine would probably have hurt me if she heard my thoughts. It was time to focus on this room. Before I could do much, I saw E trying to feel her way around the room. She must have understood this place was very spacious, and she had a lot of free ground to tread, even if most of it was empty. So I didn't want her to hurt herself by mistakes, like walking into a wall for example, so I reached out to her wrist and grabbed it. Are you concerned about me? It's okay, I can feel the air and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like this place is very empty and spacious. But I guess I can understand your concern, and if you want then, leave me somewhere I'd be useful and I'll stay there. And if you need anything touched or felt, I can probably do that better than most. There's something weird about her proposal. Not weird weird, but weird like. Uncomfortably weird. She must have sensed my unease as she corrected herself. I mean, if you find something that has to be manipulated or can be held, I'd be good at that. And for what it's worth too, I'm rather slim, so... I wrote to interrupt her in her thoughts. What do you mean, are you trying to flirt? Aren't we, aren't we all flirting with fate? I could tell by her tone, she wasn't taking this seriously. I guess I can start by giving her some sort of task. Here we go. Ball. I walked up to the ball and felt it in my hands. Strangely enough, the surface was like, very rough. This isn't a normal basketball. There are nubs all over it, but I can't figure out what it means. Are you seriously going to tell me that this ball is covered in braille? In fact, they aren't even evenly spaced either. I picked up my paper and handed the ball to E. I explained to her maybe there was something for her to do in here, in the end. Oh nice! A big ball, huh? You want me to touch your ball? I rubbed the back of my head. Why did she always, always say it in the strangest way possible? It's pretty big. I don't know if I can hold something like that properly. I rubbed the back of my head harder. Why did she always, always put it in the strangest way possible? <laughs> Maybe if I use both hands I can squeeze it better. Oh, it's very firm. I hastily wrote onto a piece of paper. E, no. Oh, you just want me to... Want me to know what's up with the surface? I'll examine it then. Check back on me after a bit and I should have had this figured out. Girl, you don't know what you could do to a boy. <laughs> Those things are probably used for, I don't know. Maybe to keep score? Like a scoreboard? Or maybe they're there to look fancy and give this place a bit more flair? Couldn't know what was written on the flags. They were a bunch. They were given to a bunch of high school teams. One of them was for the lions, one of them for the wolves, one for the eagles, and one for the rabbits. So out of all those, I swear the wolves sound the most dangerous. Who would cheer for the rabbits? Got to cheer for the underdog, man. Hey, anyone there? We're here. Help! I waved my hands at the window up above, but as the darkness indicated, there was no one in there. You know what would be nice about hanging out with E? You could be as ridiculous as you wanted, and she would never judge you. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps it'd been a tinted window. Not the likeliest explanation that there was nothing behind those windows. No matter how much I look inside, it was pitch black, as if a wall had been placed right behind the windows. And they were painted black. Huh? Window instead of a pipe? What? That door was locked. It reminded me of the doors from the stations a little, but instead of a lock, this one had a keypad. Different kinds of keys were needed to unlock both. Numbers, numbers, why is everything numbers? Numbers on our collars, numbers for these passwords, bathrooms for when you do number one or number two, and the biggest number of all, Marco himself, a complete digit. I ruffled my hair a little. The door wouldn't open yet. These floor lines were placed there to delineate the borders of some games. Painting those things on the ground ought to be an annoying job. They sometimes use tape because the paint would go away, but I guess it doesn't matter in here since nobody would use this place. It looks more like a replica of another location. Unless the people who build all this wanted to dunk each other between sessions of rearrangement. I know for a fact I'd dunk on Marco if he was there. But for E? I cast a glance at her. I don't dunk on E. You're so mean to Marco all the time, man. That's a safe. It's safely locked. Pretty simple. Why is there a safe in a gymnasium? That's very strange. Nothing beyond there except for bathrooms. Does every station here have bathrooms? It's nice to think Smiley cared enough to do all this plumbing for us. Because toilets are linked with pipes and whatever, right? So I can't wrap my head around all this. Yes, pipes. Strange. This thing's pretty high. I forgot. Are the baskets supposed to be higher or lower than this? I wonder if this is legal. I looked around the pole, but I didn't see anything particularly different. However, when I made my way behind it, there was something indicated on the back of the rectangular plate. Squares of three? What does that mean? Squares have four sides. Surely this has another meaning that would only make sense if I found other stuff. That's how escape rooms work, right? Apparently. 
I glanced inside of that space. Something about it was nagging at me. The rack held three different kinds of dumbbells. Their ends were made of different shapes. Circle, square, and triangle. Squares are three. The top level had five circle dumbbells, the middle level had two square dumbbells, and the bottom level had three triangle dumbbells. What could this mean? It's clearly important. I came by E again after leaving her with my ball for a while. Sure. Let's put it that way. Why not? The surface of the spherical object is very intriguing. In fact, I would even say it's not a regular basketball. I can feel the lines across the surface, but there are also all sorts of little nubs poking out of it. And if I crossed the surface with my fingers, I could read two things because of these... Because these things are... Braille. And it says that circle is second. I don't know what that means, but perhaps I could help you? I acknowledge your help with another piece of paper. She looked overjoyed. Amazing. I'm so glad to have helped with your ball issue. If you don't mind though, I want to keep it in my hands. I vacated the immediate area to focus on a way to leave this place before this girl ended me. I put together what I knew of the shapes and numbers so far. According to the two numbers I found, I determined the third. Those shapes were, the dumb were like the dumbbells, and of course, even if there were three numbers, there were three shapes of dumbbells. Knowing two of them allowed me to unlock the cell door. The third one would definitely go on the left over spot. Crap. That's not enough. What have I missed? Must have been a fourth number somewhere, assuming five, two, and three were the only numbers, and I knew where two of them would go, and since I never found anything for a fourth spot, oh, zero is a number two. That must go on the fourth spot. And there we go. The code was 3520. I wonder how realistic it would be to brute force this, if you figure out the code was only made of four numbers. Four numbers is a lot. That's a lot of combinations. From afar, I could see the dumbbells but up close, I realised they weren't real. There was no real weight to them. They were glued to the rack, as if they weren't meant to be taken out. Makes sense. This is already used, so no point in it now. Each of these lockers was interesting. With the doors open, they gave me a sequence of eight numbers written across the inside of the doors. And of course, the actual lockers themselves are pretty useless. Wait, this doesn't tell me the sequence to put all these numbers in. Damn it! There had to be something else to do here. After a few moments, I found that there was yet another object hidden between two halves of the lockers between the fourth and the fifth ones. Sliding puzzle, I hate those so much. Hey wait, the surface is kind of 3D. I wonder if... I gave the object to E after joining her current location. Do you want me to mess with this? I didn't even need to answer for her to start toying with it. She was so reliable. When we didn't need to take five million years to communicate one sentence. This might take a while. Check on me with again like Oh, if... yeah, well, I'm d there's nothing else to do. Come on. There. I did it. She spoke aloud, but she was finished with the sliding puzzle. It opened, letting a piece of paper fall to the ground. I grabbed it and read its contents. This is... Wait, what is this? This is a diagram of a compass with numbers on it. There's also a riddle of some kind. It says... East, North, West, South, West, North, East, North, West, South, East? It's got a bunch of directives to follow. According to this diagram... Yeah, North, East, West, and South are the first, second, third, and fourth lockers. Huh, okay. North is 1, south is 8, east is 3, west is... I took note of all the directions and the corresponding numbers. And then the directives asked me to remove a bunch of them from the lineup. Now this gives me north, east north, south, east north, south east. Those would be 28283, but that doesn't work. I asked E about what she thought was wrong. I needed a bit to translate the entire directives over, but eventually she giggled at me. What? What was so funny? Oh, you're a silly boy, yes. Don't you see what's wrong with your solution? You're trying east north, but no one has ever said it like that. It's northeast, yeah. Usually it's northeast, right? I don't think you need to reform your pairs. I think you need to reform your pairs better. Crap. She was right. East north was pretty dumb. And the answer became east south northeast southeast, which translated to 38283. Now, what is this for, I wonder? For the safe. I entered the code into the wide safe. 38283, and it worked. The safe came open. Great. We're out of here. Assuming this is the end of it. It opened, and then instantly froze up, closing it again in surprise. Inside the locker was a gun. Did Smiley put this in there? So things would spiral out of control? There was no way anyone wouldn't keep this on themselves after finding it. I looked at E while feeling strangely uneasy. I opened the safe again and saw there was a code written on the back. It was just another bunch of numbers. But this seemed as though it was our key to get out of here. Hey, you're still there, right? Have you found anything else? I shivered in reluctance. 
How could I tell her I'd found something? Yes, but it was nothing we should ever have come into contact with. There was a gun in there. A fucking gun. I definitely couldn't bring myself to use this. No way. No fucking way. But Ursa couldn't let anyone else find it. It's true. Wouldn't it be stupid if I left it here and then somehow Ray came into contact with it? Silence, I hope you're still there. I have something to talk about that I just thought of. It's kind of related to my studies back when I was still at the university. This is somewhat interesting, so I chased the thought of the gun away from my mind for a bit. Did you have a feeling like you were solving all of this really easy? Like, if you'd been given a set of blueprints and followed what was on them, without really looking at useless stuff much. I felt that way with the puzzle I had to solve. I didn't see it, of course, but it still solved very fast. I could feel the puzzle, sure, but normally it would have taken me much longer to have an idea of what it was even about. So my studies dealt with the thought process of, and that kind of thing. You know how thoughts are very complicated, but in essence they're kind of like a transmission of data between sen the senses and the brain? That's a mind in extremely, extremely simple terms. And you know how that data could theoretically be manipulated or sent, or even received? You know about computers, I'm sure. It's a little like cloud technology. When using that, everything gets saved somewhere in the cloud, and then anything that has access to the cloud can pull from it. Due to that, I was wondering, is it possible that we're pulling from some kind of cloud? And especially in my case, since my senses are disabled, I have no recourse but to try really hard otherwise. So maybe my senses are disabled so I'm forced to pull from the cloud. If I'm given no choice, I either both fail and get no information, or I succeed in... She motioned at the solved puzzle she held, essentially forcing me to pull from it. I knew what she meant. So far I'd felt this a little, yes, but I couldn't let myself get caught up in thought. If this is the code to unlock the doors below, we were free for now. I wrote to her to explain the situation. Oh, we're done already? I hope the talk was nice at least. And you know, I wonder what this all means. And if any of this is true, what is being transmitted from where and why? I had to follow her example. She was still positive and happy despite all this happened to her, and she was smart too. I went to unlock all the doors and made my way back to the safe. Before we went, I had this to consider. This gun. I had to take it. Despite my decision, I hesitated slightly. This is still a gun. I knew I had no choice despite the fact. Because Ray was out there and he similarly possessed one of those. I wondered, did Ray find it in one of these escape rooms too? Were they planted here to make us fight each other? If that's the case, boy I'm glad I found this one before anyone else did. Decided that had been enough time wasted. I snatched it up and stuffed it in the bag the old man gave me. As I went to fetch E again, I thought at least I had a way to hide it. As long as nobody checked it, the bag would be would conceal the firearm. I took it down to the little lobby. Since the doors were unlocked, we could step forward and back into the station. It was time to give our farewells to this area. We had plenty of time to do that because the train didn't come by for a little bit. Alright, we're going to wrap this one up here because we're super deep out of time, but we have definitely hit ourselves on another long pathway. Actually, let's jump back because it's obviously saved. We'll jump back and we'll have a look at the flowchart, see where we're at. Yes, we are down the orange path, just like I was hoping, which is brilliant. And we will continue that in the next one. Until then, everybody goes enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next episode.